time, or should I say we've been on your team because we represent you in the ministry of Sunset Solutions, and we just praise you and thank you. We praise the Lord and thank him for making it possible for us to work together in this ministry of the gospel. Um, it's, been, uh, it's been great, yeah. We've, uh, we've certainly enjoyed it, and it's a pleasure to get to be with you here today. Uh, as Dan said, we tried to come two weeks ago, but um, the Lord had other plans, and I want to thank all of you who filled in and took care of things when we couldn't be here. And, um, but it's good to be here today. Again, I just, I just want to thank you. Um, I do have some questions for you, but before, it's a quiz. Um, I, didn't, I forgot to hand out the paper and pencil, um, so you'll just have to answer these questions in your mind and in your heart. But before I get started, I just want to ask the Lord for his grace, because I'm very nervous standing up here before all of you. Our gracious Heavenly Father, I do thank you. I thank you for your many, many, many mercies, Father. And I thank you for these, your children, and for the privilege you've given to me to share with them this morning. Speak through me, Father, and open their hearts and mind to hear what you have for us this morning, to speak to each of our hearts, to encourage us, to challenge us, and to continue your patient and wondrous work of conforming each one of us into the image of your beautiful Son, in whose name I pray. Amen. So, um, these questions I want to ask, I, I didn't make these up myself. They come from a book that's called Explore, and this book, Explore, that's spelled with an X, um, is put out by the Center for Mission Mobilization. So, how do you view your Bible? Do you, do you read your Bible as a rule book with a bunch of do's and don'ts? Or is it to discover God's plan for you? Or maybe you read your Bible like a spiritual cup of coffee, helping you start off each day right. Maybe it's a pick-me-up that is something to encourage you when you're feeling blue. Or is it your treasure map as you look for God's plan for your life? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not saying any of these are bad. I can relate to more than one of these myself. I'm only wondering if we're viewing our Bible as a collection of random stories without an overriding purpose. See, the Bible isn't just about us, but each one of us will find ourselves in its pages. The Bible is about God, and it's about his desire to be recognized and worshipped by all the peoples of the earth. You know, that's God's purpose for the church. That's what missions is all about. That is God's heart, to be recognized by all the people of the earth. When you think of missions, what verse comes to your mind? Many of us jump right to the Great Commission. And we figure that's it. Go into all the world and make disciples. And that is our responsibility, to make disciples. We're all called to do that, and not just here in our own community, not just in our own county, not just in our own state, not just even in our own nation, but throughout the world. We are called to make disciples. But did you know that there are more than 1,500 verses that speak to God's desire that all people recognize him and his glory, and that this theme actually runs through every book in the pages of Scripture. 
If you'll turn in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 12, we'll read there about a man whom the Lord called to leave his homeland. God was choosing him to become a great nation, to bless him, to make his name great. But this blessing wasn't just for himself or for his descendants. Listen carefully to who else this blessing is for. I'm going to begin in verse 1 of Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you. And I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you, and make your name great, and so you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you. And the one who curses you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Did you catch that? God wasn't pronouncing a blessing on the nation that would descend from Abraham the nation of Israel, God pronounced a blessing on all the families of the earth. It's God's desire that all would be blessed through Abraham. Paul the Apostle caught it. <clears throat> he tells us in, Gen in uh, excuse me, Galatians 3.8, the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand through Abraham, saying, all the nations will be blessed in you. Now, who are the Gentiles? Gentiles who are all those who are not physical descendants of Abraham and Sarah. They are not part of the Jewish nation. God's desire was that this promise to Abraham extended to both Jew and Gentile alike. Let's look at a part of King Solomon's prayer. We're going to turn to the book of 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 8. Now the temple was a glorious structure. It was erected on the summit of Mount Moriah in Israel for the worship of God. It took seven years in the making, and the time of dedication was a time of great joy. When the Ark of the Covenant was brought into the temple, a cloud of God's glory filled the place, signifying his presence. Then Solomon lifted up his hands to heaven and poured out his heart to God. And part of his prayer, beginning in verse 41, reads like this. Also, concerning the foreigner who is not of your people, Israel, when he comes from a far country, for your name's sake, for, for they will hear of your great name and your mighty hand, and of your outstretched arm when he comes and he prays toward this house here in heaven your dwelling place and do according to all for which the foreigner calls to you in order that all the peoples of the earth may know your name to fear you as your people Israel and that they may know that this house which is is called by your name. The temple was to be a witness to all the peoples of other countries. That they would hear the Lord and that they would quote, all the peoples of the earth may know your name to fear you. Let's look at Psalm 67. It's a call to the nations. Notice the reason for God's blessings. Beginning in verse 1. 
God be gracious to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. Selah. That your way may be known on the earth, your salvation among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you will judge the peoples with uprightness and guide the nations of the earth. Selah. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the earth, the earth has yielded its produce, God. Our God blesses us. God blesses us that all the ends of the earth may fear him. You see a plea for God's blessings here, yet it's for a purpose. It's not just so we can be happy and fulfilled and comfortable and prosperous, although these are benefits too. The purpose of God's blessing on us is to make his name known. He blesses you. Why? So that God's way may be known in all the earth. God blesses you so that the nations may learn of his salvation. God blesses you so that all the peoples can someday praise him. God poured out his blessings on you so that the nations can be glad and sing for joy. God has blessed you so that all the peoples of the earth can praise him. God continues to bless you so that all the ends of the earth will receive his blessings and fear him also. Turn to Isaiah chapter 49. You know, some, although I don't think anybody here, but some may be surprised to learn that Messiah Jesus, the ultimate blessing from Abraham, came for two reasons. Hear what Isaiah says in verses 5 and 6 of Isaiah chapter 49. Isaiah is describing Messiah, and he says in verse 5, And now says the Lord who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him so that Israel might be gathered to him. Dropping to verse 6. He says, Is it too small a thing that you should be my servant to rise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved ones for Israel? I will also make you a light to the nations so that my salvation may reach to the end of of the earth. Jesus' mission was to restore Israel. This will be fulfilled in future events. But God also sent Jesus to be a light to the nations so that his salvation would reach to the ends of the earth. Not just our neighborhoods and our country, God's vision was that all the earth would know him. Let's jump to the New Testament in Acts chapter 17, verses 26 and 27. And think about where every nation came from and why he specifically chose the very time and place in which every person on earth would live. Beginning in verse 26. And he made from one nation, or excuse me, and he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined their appointed times and the boundaries of their habitation, that they would seek God, if perhaps they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. God has uniquely determined the time and place for each and every person in every nation on earth. And he has done that 
for a purpose. And I quote, that they would seek God. Perhaps this even speaks to you personally about why you are here right now. Let's jump to the last book of the Bible. Turn to Revelation chapter 5. John has just finished recording the seven letters to the churches, and he sees an open door to heaven and where a voice calls out, come up here and I will show you what must take place. We capture, capture a glimpse of heaven here with brilliant scenery and thundering sounds and odd looking creatures. And God sitting on his throne is the focus. John sees the throne and the one sitting there is surrounded by 24 elders. There were others there and much activity. The one sitting on the throne was holding a scroll that no one could open. One of the 24 elders then tells John, there is one who can open that scroll with its seven seals. John sees a lamb now standing there before the throne. And that's when the elders sing a new song. Let's look at verses 8 and 9. When he took the book, the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each one holding a harp and a golden bowl full of incense, which are the prayers, prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you, to take the book and break its seals. For you were slain and purchased for God with your blood men from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. Jesus is worthy to open that scroll and its seals. He is worthy having accomplished the will of the Father to purchase with his own blood, men from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. So, how is this going to be accomplished? You know, presently, over one third of the world's population have seldom, if ever, heard the name of Jesus. What is shocking is that less than 10% of the world missionary force is working to reach the unreached people groups of the world. Just imagine for a moment. You can close your eyes and think. Pretend we're talking about you. Where you live right now, where you live, there is no church. That is, no fellowship of believers where you can come to like this one to hear about Jesus. Where you live, there is no bookstore where you can go to purchase a Bible to learn about Jesus. Where you live, there are no Christians you can talk to about Jesus. Matter of fact, you will probably never meet a Christian in all your life. But where you live, it's not a spiritual vacuum, as you might think. Your neighbors are probably Hindus, or Buddhists, or Muslims. Imagine that where you live, the government or your culture may be very much opposed to you changing your beliefs, and they will not allow others to spread beliefs other than the ones you've been raised with. But perhaps the biggest reasons for your inability to hear about Jesus is because where you live, there is little or no effort being made to bring you the good news of Jesus. Okay, you can all open your eyes again. That is hard to fathom. Granted, it is very difficult to reach people 
with the gospel in many parts of the world. Yet, nevertheless, the need exists. We've all heard about the 1040 window. There are unreached peoples all over the world, yet the vast majority of the unreached people live between 10 degrees latitude north of the equator to 40 degrees latitude north of the equator in Africa and Asia. Simply put, the vast majority of the unreached people, some 95%, if not more, live in that region. Well, we could use the acronym THUMB to help us get a grasp of this. T is for tribal peoples. Many of these tribal peoples are living in, believe, in Vietnam. And believe it or not, there are 60 ministry workers, 60 ministry workers for every one million tribal people in Vietnam. H, you can guess, is for Hindu. These are mostly in India and Nepal. There are only two ministry workers for every one million Hindu people. You, this is for the unreligious. Many of these are living in China, and there's a history behind that. But there are only 12 ministry workers for every one million of these unreligious people. M, Muslim. These are mostly in North Africa, the Middle East, and Indonesia. There are only six ministry workers to working to reach every one million Muslims. And B is for Buddhists. These are mostly in Southeast Asia, China, and Japan. There are only 13 workers per one billion Buddhists. Friends, you have more ministry workers right here in this church than many people in the world have trying to reach them with the good news of Jesus Christ. So how will the scripture be fulfilled? How will every nation be represented before the throne? Since its very beginning, Sunset Solutions has been working to reach unreached peoples in almost every nation of the world. And we do that by providing tailored technology solutions. You are a huge part of that in your support of this ministry all these years so faithfully. We thank you. For the unreached within the 1040 window, we have had the privilege of coming alongside uh, believers in Iraq and helping them set up uh, radio stations in several key cities. We have also had the privilege of coming alongside those in um, Russia and Ukraine. We were on the ground floor of helping them get, um, what is it called, New Life Radio Satellite Network operational. We have been able to support the ministry visions of believers in places like Iran, Eritrea, Mauritania, Afghanistan, uh, Cambodia, Indonesia. For the Ukraine, TWR, a longtime ministry partner of ours, started a campaign, a campaign to raise funds for our solar-powered sunset radios. And along with a campaign of our own, we are able to provide radios for the people there. Um, so this little girl is placing a sticker in the Ukrainian language on the back of our solar-powered sunset radio. We do have work teams come, mostly from churches, and they help us prepare the radios for shipment. TWR is actually broadcasting into the country of Ukraine from outside of its borders and bringing the hope of Jesus to people in this devastated country. Sunset Solutions has also joined the Alliance for the Unreached, an, in an initiative called A Third of Us. And this is a coalition of ministries that have come together to seek to reach the third of the world's population that have never heard the gospel. 
These are our interns from this summer. And they're wearing the symbol of three lines, one line separated from the other two to depict the third of the world's population uh, um, of people who have never even heard the name of Jesus. But the 1040 window is not the only region of the world where there are unreached people groups. There are pockets of unreached in places all over the world. And we would like to take a moment to just share a few of them in a little bit more detail while highlighting the technology that we provide that, are, that is helping to make a difference. One of those places is Malawi. The Yao of southeastern Africa are a good example of a mostly unreached, resistant people group. And they actually make a third, they are the third largest ethnic group in Malawi. They are comprised mostly of subsistence farmers, uh, fishermen, and 99% of the Yao people are Muslim. Now, as COVID-19 created fear in many parts of the world, our radio ministry partner, Radio Li Languka, found an increase to its listenership. They began broadcasting health information and helping people understand how they could help prevent the spread of the virus and good hygiene habits and so forth. So we sent them our solar powered sunset radios and now people are hearing not only this health, health information, but they are also hearing the gospel through Christian programming. Uganda. Mike, one of our colleagues, went to Uganda. He went to a church in Uganda, and he brought one of our innovative tools. Now, this church is in the midst, right in the middle of a Muslim community. In fact, it is actually located between two mosques. And Pastor Ronald started with five people, and he's now over 200. He's all about relationship. In fact, despite the rock, occasional rock that flies through the windows of his church when he's preaching, um, he makes it a point to go door to door and to build relationships with the people and to share his Savior, Jesus Christ, with them. So Pastor Ronald found out about our um, solar media center. Now, our solar media center is a control box that our engineers designed, and it's powered by a um, uh, solar panel and various accessories can be plugged into it. So this is intended for regions of the world where there is little to no electricity. And Pastor Ronald ordered the solar media center and he ordered uh, a couple LED lights. So now um, the, with the well that he installed next to his church, people can draw water at night. Um, he has one in his church, so now they can hold church services at night. He ordered uh, cell phone charging stations. And you think, cell phone charging stations in a remote area, are there really cell phones there? And I'm sure the Goldies could uh, um, attest to the fact that there are cell phones. They're very prolific in Africa. The problem with places that don't have electricity is um, where do you charge them? And then when you do find a place to charge them, they are, you often have to pay to charge them. So Pastor Ronald is providing this as a service for the community. He also ordered a couple of loudspeakers. Now remember, he's between two mosques and they traditionally have loudspeakers. Well, he has one of his own now. And what's really exciting is he has a Wi-Fi hotspot. So this is not giving the villagers or the community access to the internet. This is um, media content that's on this Wi-Fi hotspot that they can download to their phones and then take back to their families. So they can, what Pastor Ronald has on his is the Jesus film, he has gospel music, he has sermons, and he has Bible recordings. So he is so thrilled to be able to um, increase his engagement with the community and build relationships and then be able to continue to share Jesus Christ with them. So an aviation ministry that we are not allowed to name nor the country in which they serve, but they are in the Asia Pacific region. And you're probably going to know who they are just by my explanation, but they, um, they transport uh, Bible translators and church planters and important supplies to 
regions where that are only accessi accessible by air. So these are very isolated areas. And they were having problems at their base of operations with their power. And this was hampering their ministry. This was making it very difficult for them to do what they knew God had called them to do. So they contacted us. So before that, they were trying to, s so when they were having power issues, they set up a generator and they feared the generator was being overloaded and this, nothing was, was, um, was working. So they contacted Sunset Solutions and our power solutions team like a team of doctors diagnosed the problem, came up with a solution, and we were able to provide them with that solution. And now they are able to go about the business that God has called them to. So I'm going to talk about uh, culture in Peru just for a second. And just imagine for a moment um, serving mud water to friends who come to your door at 1.30 in the morning to help you mourn the loss of a loved one. And the native culture in Peru, where our president, David, visited earlier this year, it is customary to serve coffee to those who come to pay their respects. But there is not even time for the silt to settle to the bottom of the bucket that the children have just brought, to have just filled at the river's edge. The dirty Huyaga River is their only source of water for drinking, for cooking, for bathing, and for washing their clothes. And you can see the picture here. Now, Sunset Solutions does not drill wells. Sunset Solutions does not provide filtration. But we do have a network of ministry partners who do. Now, once that clean water is established, our Sunset Link technology keeps that clean water flowing because it monitors the health and performance of the well. So you may not realize that in places like Africa, for example, a third of the hand pumps at any given time are not even functioning. In fact, within four to six months of installation, most hand pumps will break down. So what happens when the installer goes home? Who is there to fix the well? What happens to the testimony of the ministry that put the well in? And they're trying to share Jesus along with it, and what does that make them think about our God? So our Sunset Link allows us, yes, right from our computers in Elkhart, Indiana, to monitor the, the health and wellness of these, of these hand pumps in addition to our ministry partners on the ground, and a team can be dispatched when we begin to see that there's a problem. And oftentimes, that team can be dispatched before the villagers even know that there's a problem. So this is a way to meet dire human needs while opening the door wide to be able to share the one who is the living water. As we saw in the scriptures, God has preordained our lives so that we would seek him in the very time and place where we live. But as believers, he has also blessed us, not for our own benefit, but so that all the peoples from every nation would be able to find salvation and praise him. Do you want to be a part of God's calling to the nations as we saw in Psalm 67? Who benefited from the blessing God gave Abraham? Was it just Abraham? Or was it you? And was it me? Who benefits from your blessings? Do you think they're just for you, for your family, or your church? or your community? Do you really want to partner with God in reaching every tribe, every people, every tongue, and every nation? So how? How will you get involved? Will it mean being more intentional in prayer about the spiritual needs of the unreached world? Twice our Lord instructed his disciples to pray the Lord of the harvest to send forth laborers, saying, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. 
That would seem a great place to start. That is something each and every one of us can do. Maybe you know specific laborers who are working in the 1040 window. Pray for them specifically. Or if you know of others who are trying to get there, pray for them specifically. I've put a reminder on my phone every morning at 1040 AM, I'm reminded to pray for the workers I know over there and to pray for the hearts of the people who live there. Would it mean giving financially to missions and missionaries who are laboring to reach the unreached? The Apostle Paul said, whosoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will I call on him in whom they have not believed? How will they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? How will they preach unless they are sent? Are you on the sending end of that passage? Are you making it possible for laborers to work to reach the unreached? Will it mean going there yourselves to regions of the world and be used of God to rub shoulders with the unreached, to touch their lives? Paul continued to say, quoting Isaiah, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news of good things. Steve Horthon who is the founder and director of Waymakers, a mobilization ministry focusing on reaching every people group with the gospel. He is also co-editor of the Perspectives courses focusing on world missions. He said something <coughs> interesting about the Lord's Prayer. When Jesus said, hallowed be your name, Paul, or excuse me, Steve Horthon said, this is not a statement of praise as it appears in our English translations. It's rather, in the original language, a request. Father, sanctify your name. He says we could paraphrase that. Father, lift up, single out, exalt, manifest, and reveal your name to the people of the earth. Become famous for who you really are. Cause the people of the, of the earth to know and adore you. The Lord is beckoning you and me and all of his people to join with every people, to join in, in bringing every people group to his throne. I'd like to show you a video in a moment to give you a, a virtual tour of our ministry at Sunset Solutions. Before we do that, Ooh. do I just keep talking? <laughs> okay. I forgot you guys have that here. It's, it must be 12 o'clock. Oh my. Sorry. Okay. So I um, just want to highlight some things we have on the display table. And one, you'll see this cute little girl. Um, it says abounding. This is our annual report, a great summary of the ministry. If you just want to get a, a snapshot of what God's been doing, that's a great one to pick up. We do have our newsletter if you want to pick that up. And our contact information is on the back. If you'd like to be added to that mailing list, feel free to let us know. Um, we have our quarterly newsletter that's put out by Sunset Solutions. And this is something that you can subscribe to if you'd either like the monthly e-news or the Hard copy, quarterly hard copy. Um, you could let us know by picking that up as well. And then finally, if you sense the Lord calling you to get more involved in missions, we have a personnel brochure, and we would love to talk to you about your skills and how God might be able to use your skills for kingdom work. So we'll go ahead and show our video. <laughs> Good morning, Sunset Solutions. How may I help you? Oh, hi, Paul. 
Oh, hold on one minute. Wow, what a surprise to see you. Hey, thanks for stopping by to see us here at Sunset Solutions. You know what, why don't I grab Paul and we can show you what we do around here and we can also show you what God is doing through this ministry. Hold on one minute. Hey, Paul, come up to the front area. Okay, bye-bye. Follow me. We are an evangelical mission organization. We come alongside ministries around the world, helping them expand their reach and deepen their impact. We do that by providing technology-based solutions to advance the gospel worldwide. One area in which we specialize is radio. We have helped establish over 500 Christian radio stations in locations all over the world. Many of these stations are broadcasting into areas where missionaries cannot go. Our engineers also designed a solar-powered, fixed-tuned radio receiver. We call it the Sunset Radio. We have distributed over 70,000 of these little missionaries to key locations around the globe. We work with gospel-focused clean water ministries to monitor the health and performance of their clean water systems. We make this data accessible on the web, which allows our partners to perform needed maintenance and keep the clean water flowing. This maintains credibility and opens the door to sharing about the living water, Jesus Christ. We are employing new technologies, including ways to leverage mobile technology. We are also working to address unstable power issues, which is a reality in many developing countries. Our goal here at Sunset Solutions is to maximize the kingdom impact of ministries who are seeking to reach people in other parts of the world. Our student involvement provides an opportunity for college students or graduates to gain on-the-job spiritual and professional training in their field of study while serving in a missions context. Both Paul and I are trained coaches, coming alongside our staff and helping them reach their goals. Paul is also church liaison, connecting the local church with what we do here at Sunset Solutions. Erica also serves on the communications team, helping to get the word out about what God is doing around the world. She also fills a much needed role in helping to cover the receptionist desk. Well, thank you for joining us on this brief tour. We hope that helps you understand more clearly what we do here at Sunset Solutions. When you think of us, please pray for us that we'd continue to be effective in this ministry that God has granted us. We're excited about what God is doing, but we need people. If you would like to use your skills for ministry to reach people around the world, please get in touch with us. Uh, both of you, Paul and Erica, for sharing with us this morning, and we look forward to being with you at prayer meeting tonight, 5 o'clock. They're going to be uh, sharing more of their ministry and the prayer requests that we can hold them up for. But let's close in, uh, in prayer for Paul and Erica as we, as we head out. Father, we thank you so much for meeting with us this morning and for the power of the gospel to, to change hearts all over the world, to lead us to repentance and to accept that salvation that so freely was bought by our Savior so many years ago. We thank you for the clarity of the gospel, the word that we have, the tools you've given us, and we just ask a rich blessing on Paul and Eric as they continue in their ministry. Encourage them. Things are, are difficult for all ministries, and I know that they are, have their struggles, and the future is, is they just need to depend on you and we're relying on you to sustain that ministry and to to keep things going there at sunset solutions we pray that you would meet their the needs of their family and encourage them spiritually as they have encouraged us and give us this heart for the the gospel to get this word out to the whole world that we've heard about this morning thank you so much for the gospel that we have and for your love for us amen you are dismissed